Hi everyone, welcome back to our New Year's series on preemptive maintenance. So a couple things we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about ignition system. So, you know, one of the things I encourage everybody to do during that first year of ownership after you've finished your airplane building it, or you've acquired one, is to figure out what kind of systems you have on your airplane, especially in the engine compartment, and understand what kind of maintenance might be necessary to do on those. I assure you they aren't maintenance free. In our last video, we talked about doing the hoses. Today, I want to spend some time talking about ignition systems. So typically, there's a couple of ignition systems available on our aircraft. Most of them are stock uh, of yesteryear with two magnetos. And yes, those do have maintenance requirements, and we're going to talk about those. And then probably in the last 10 years or more, we're seeing a whole lot more use of electronic ignition systems. Lots of advantages there. Lots of different, there's probably three or four different uh, kinds of electronic ignition that you can buy today. Um, on mine, I've been using the light speed ignition system. And uh, so there's some maintenance requirements with that. If you read the manual, every uh, 10 years or 500 hours, you're supposed to replace the ignition wires. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, what happens is ignition wires, one, they're up here, they're, you know, flopping around quite a bit. They can get old, brittle, they can break, the resistance can increase in them. And what happens uh, when that happens is the coils that you see here uh, start working harder and harder to the point that eventually they'll fail. So it really makes sense to stay on top of the wires and make certain you're using the right plugs. With uh, the light speed system, the Denso plugs are recommended. They've got a 5K ohm resistance uh, in them, which helps. And when you're replacing this wire, there is a minimum uh, or maximum amount of resistance per foot that's in the manual. So uh, you want to pay attention what kind of wire you replace it with. The other thing I would encourage those of you who actually do have light speed ignition systems is these are the new style coils. I've been running these for a little over a year now. I've been putting these on a lot of customer airplanes. They are bigger than the previous coils so they do seem to generate a little hotter spark uh, you'll notice that when you want to run lean of peak or uh, you can also gap your plugs now a little larger and that helps with some uh, better fuel burning as well because these generate a hotter spark now how do you tell you got a bad coil well one of the things you can do here is if you pull off on your old coils or these coils the the, the uh, spark plug wires and you take an ohm meter and you measure across these two terminals the way i've seen these coils fail is they'll go to some very low resistance because a winding will get shorted out inside typically you should see about 8,000 to 8500 ohms of resistance across these two terminals if you have less than that it's time to replace the coil when you put these on uh, by the way, I'll use some Dow 4 on each of these connections. It just helps uh, with corrosion to keep the corrosion down because this is, you know, can be in a wet environment up here if you're flying in the weather a lot. So uh, anyway, take a look at replacing those coils for those of you who've been running the older. The older coils are much smaller in size uh, and a different form factor. So when you put these on, you actually have to make a little different mount. It's not that difficult. Okay, let's go over here and we'll show you how we make the spark plug wires. It's very simple. Uh, I actually buy this stuff in bulk because we do so much of it, but you can get the wires pre-made from Lightspeed there by Klaus. So the first thing to do is pull the uh, old wire off, and you got to remove it to figure out uh, the length you need if you're going to use these same rubber caps. You can get new caps, uh, but these caps seem to last. One of the things I do notice is they'll stick over time, so I'll just use a little screwdriver here and kind of go around the inside and just free it from the spark plug wire, like so. And then grab it firmly here in here and it should pull right out. Okay, there we go. So here's the wire that we're gonna replace. So you can also get this spark plug wire. This is just MSD uh, eight and a half millimeter. It's a, uh, you know, made for electronic ignition. And one super duper tool here will do all the crimping that you need. It's a pro skit, uh, pro crimper. I think the part number on it's a CP-371. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is strip the wire. So it goes in one spot here. And what I do is just crimp it down a little bit and then twist. And then it'll come right out. And you want to be careful that we don't nick. 
uh, the center conductor there. You can see the little wound. I'll put it here across the silver and maybe we can zoom in and see that a little bit better. Okay, go. So now we're going to push this right down in there and kind of make certain that the little black center lead stays down inside there. And then with our little crimper tool, goes right in the forward section there. Put that right in place. Again, making certain we're right down where we should be and crimp. Okay. And then we get a little tug and it should stay in place. Okay. So now next thing to do, I just kind of squeeze these to get them started. But there is another section here in the tool that works very nice just to do the center crimp. There we go. So we got a real nice crimp there. And now to put this back together, what I'll do is take some Dow 4 and just rub it around here real well. Kind of nice. One, it stops corrosion down in there, but it does help this slide right back on a little better. So we just push that like so. And just grab and kind of keep pushing. There we go, and we're all the way up inside. And so then it's just a matter of cutting the other end of the wire to match it and redo that crimp on the other side. So you can see it's really easy to make these cables, and there's no reason not to do them every 500 hours or 10 years. So once I've made the wire, before I do put it on the aircraft, I will test it with a resistance meter here from one end to the other, just to make sure we have no breaks. There you can see we got about 85 ohms. So this is about, I think, 60 ohm or 50 ohm per foot wire. And the longest wire you should see with the light speed, if the coils are all mounted on top of the engine, is maybe 100 to 200 ohms. Most of the wires are fairly short, so they'll all be between 60 and 80 usually. But I do check them before they go back on the aircraft. So the other side of the ignition on my aircraft is a magneto, okay? Some people run dual electronic ignitions. I'm just not comfortable doing that yet, even though I've never had an electrical failure on one of my airplanes. If there is smoke in the cockpit, I'd like to be able to kill the master switch, sort out the smoke, and not have to worry about the engine. So I do carry a magneto on one side. In this case, as I mentioned, we're at 1,100 hours on this aircraft. Again, back to doing maintenance on equipment that's in your aircraft. Right here you can see the magneto that's installed. This is a six slick 6350. So that's a non-impulse coupled magneto. So what does that mean? We need the electronic ignition for starting this aircraft. So uh, six cylinders and impulse coupled mags don't play well together. Matter of fact, there's a 250 hour inspection requirement on impulse coupled mags on six cylinder engines for those of you who may have them. So in this case, I've been running the 6350, which is a direct drive, non-impulse coupled magneto. Uh, it has a 500 hour inspection requirement, which I've done now actually three times. Okay, I'll do it at usually 400 hours or so. And uh, you know, you can get an overhauled magneto anymore for around $1,100. The prices to do the parts yourself anymore are really getting kind of ridiculous. Some of those gears that a year or two ago were $100 are now over $200. The distributor gear housing inside used to be about 300, is now over 600. So you can see the prices start to add up. So here we are at uh, 1100 hours, and I'm thinking maybe it's time to just uh, put a different magneto on it, an overhauled one. And then I got to thinking, you know, um, many uh, years ago, I actually pulled a slick 6393, I think it is, off of one of my engines. Now, 6393 is a little different magneto in that it has a retard breaker on it. So most magnetos have one P-League attachment right here. That's what you're used to your key switch going to. In this case, for a retarded magneto for starting, direct drive, non-impulse coupled, meaning we got a retard breaker in there. So there's two sets of breaker points. We can actually apply a voltage here from a slick sure start, which actually helps during the starting process. So now we have a magneto that we can use as a starting magneto as well. So um, since I happen to have this one, it's new. I also have a new harness for it. I'm gonna go ahead and install that on the right-hand side with a slick sure start. 
So uh, now I won't get stuck anywhere, just in case the electronic ignition should give out, we'll still be able to start the engine. So uh, we'll show you that all wired up. Bottom line is you install this magneto just like you'd install any other magneto. Bring your engine up to uh, whatever it's supposed to be timed at. In this case, uh, six cylinder Lycoming uh, with stock pistons. We time it at 25 degrees before top dead center. So we'll remove number one plug, get it set up for 25 degrees before top dead center. I've already pinned the magneto to hold it in place and we'll just put this inside uh, the slot on the engine and then use our buzz box to adjust it for final timing. So then we'll wire up the sure fly and uh, the sure start and we'll uh, go ahead and attach it right here on the retard breaker terminal. Well, hello again. We got another add-on to the video that we just showed you a few minutes ago on preemptive maintenance on light speed ignition system. So as luck would have it, this week we had an RV7A come into the shop. It's a four-cylinder engine, has a light speed ignition on and a magneto on one side. Actually, that's the way I like it. Okay, but one of the things the customer is complaining about is the light speed was intermittent, it was backfiring, and sometimes it was completely inoperative. It actually showed up that way here at the shop when it was run up, uh, the light speed side was showing dead. So if you remember, there were some things I said you test to go through that. We pulled off the spark plug wires, could not get a spark reliably between the two coil terminals. So we started chasing down everything. And some of the things we noticed was there was a lot of corrosion back here on these coil connections here. So those have all been replaced and cleaned up. And if you look back inside here, this has got a hull effect. A uh, magneto pickup. It goes into a magneto hull. It's a hull effect. You can see the, there's an LED back there, a green LED. Well, we could not get that to come on. The way you time this system is you bring number one cylinder to top dead center and then turn this just like you would turn a magneto and until that green LED light comes on. So that light was not coming on. So we pulled off this connector here, uh, that DB9 connector there, and measured it. And we did, in fact, have five volts at that connector. So we cleaned up those contacts, put it all back together with some Dow 4 to prevent any future corrosion. And then all of a sudden we had good spark up here at the coils. So then one of the other things we noticed, remember I mentioned you should check these wires. They're supposed to be replaced every uh, five years, every 10 years or 500 hours. That had not been done here. And in fact, one of these wires was open. So that could explain some of the backfires. So we replaced all the wires, cleaned up everything, put Dow 4 on the contacts. And now we've got sparks reliably across these coils. So we're going to get some other maintenance done on there, and uh, dollars to donuts, it's going to run fine now.